there's a difference. Um, it does, if you are a safe, sanctified, and filled, you can turn me down just a little bit, please. Safe, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost uh, person, and you begin to speak life on Facebook, cool. But when you display weakness on Facebook, you're not helping people. Uh, I, I need y'all to recognize that. Because one day you are preaching and professing to be this awesome man and woman of God. And then the next day is, well, where's the mission? What you're doing is you're proving that you are double-minded. And I believe that was one of my posts from last week. You want to know if you're double-minded? Go back and read your post. If your posts are like a seesaw, recognize where you are. Because when I really and truly trust God, even in the middle of the storm, I have peace because I know he's bringing me out. Hmm. So then I don't have to go and put all my issues and troubles and complaints on Facebook because I'm trying to teach people to want the God that I serve. And if the God that you serve is so weak that he can't help you when you're going through, if the God that you serve is so weak that he can't keep you out of depression, then are you really an ambassador? You see, we begin to look at these things like, well, it's just Facebook. Why is she talking about Facebook? Because it's the representation of Christ that you are given. And when you misrepresent him, you will pay the cost. I need you to understand that. I know you're thinking it's just a little Facebook post. But what you're doing is you are becoming a stumbling block in somebody's walk with God because you sanctified and holy one day and God is so good, so awesome, and he's able to do everything and nothing is too hard for God. But the next day, he too hard, it's too hard for God to take you out of your funk. Ah, is he that weak? If your God is that weak, then before the service is over tonight, you really need to come and meet mine. I'm serious. I don't know what God y'all serving. If he's too weak to take you out of your funk. Now we are human. And we have our funk. I have mine. Do you see it? Do y'all see me when I just don't want to love God or trust him? I'm just, I just don't want to talk to God right now. If I displayed that to you as your leader, would you feel comfortable in following me as a woman of God, trusting God for everything? No. Huh. So what makes it different when you too are an ambassador just like me and you do? You are better off not saying anything and going to God in secret unless you just won't pity for people. But if you want pity from people, the pat on the back, the uplifting words that you ain't listening to no way from people, then God said, then you done got your reward. Man, tap you on the back. Oh, poor baby going through, I'm here for you. What you gonna do? You gonna pay my bills? You gonna help me out of this depression? Can you heal me? No, I think I'd rather keep my mouth shut and lean on the same God that we come in here and pray to and shout to, worship, because he's the only one that can take me out of it. Hmm. So then we begin to say that sometimes you have to recognize that we are the only Bible that people see. So then if my family members are watching me and I'm high on cloud nine, serving the Lord, running for the Lord, God is so good, he's blessing me, y'all y'all need to look at my daddy, see what he doing right now, and God, and God, and God, and then my family start believing that I'm living right. They start believing, they might listen to me, now I may be able to lead my family to Christ now, because I am telling them how good God is, and they're not seeing me down and lowly, all they are hearing are the praises of God. And when they finally start to trust the God in you, here you go. So now, can they, when they finally start to believe this God that you serve, who shut them down? You cut your own loved ones out. 
you have now become a stumbling block to your loved ones. Uh, not just that you have to deal with that because I have called you, appointed you, and anointed you. And this is your representation of how strong I am. Okay. There's no authority. When Jesus told the storm to cease, it wasn't what he spoke to that was powerful. It was where he spoke from. You are declaring and decreeing, but where are you getting your authority from? You can't speak and give what you don't. Who's speaking over you? One can only speak out what he holds in, which is authority. So then, because we're church people, and we, we go and we get all, and I speak right now, in the name of Jesus, there will be peace, there will be, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Because before you can speak that over anybody else, you have to first have the authority to speak it over yourself. Otherwise, you're just being judged. Mm. Judged. 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 Church. I like y'all little speaky bonnets now. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Judged. Which means I can't play the role. I can clap when he's supposed to clap. I can keep coming on a Honda when I'm supposed to speak in tongues. But I have absolutely no power. Because I don't have power to first speak over myself. I don't have power first to speak to my spirit to do those things which I don't want to do in my flesh. But because of the authority of God on the inside of me, I make my flesh submit itself to the spirit. Now, if I can't make my own flesh submit to the spirit in me, how can I declare and decree anything over anybody else? I, I can't declare and decree my own flesh to lay down. And yet, who Jesus, and speak like they gonna do that thing too. I speak it right now. Get that strength face with it and everything. What difference does it make? You look good and, and you sound good in front of man. You, you sound anointed. But let me tell you something. I'd rather have someone that can speak with the anointing with the calm voice. Than someone who can holler and scream and shout in the mic with no power. You see, people are tricked into thinking that there's power in yelling. There is no, absolutely no power in a yell. The power comes from the authority that arises in you with your lifestyle in Christ. Mm. How much authority do you have according to your lifestyle? And then you can pretty much gauge why you can't declare and decree stuff and it begin to happen. As the Bible says, speak those things that are not as though they were his already done. says that these things happen according to the power that worketh in you. No power. No decree. Hmm. 
no power, no manifestation. Unless you are blessed by association. You see, some people are blessed because they come here. And God finds favor with those who are covering you. And when they go prostrate, and I'm not just talking about and myself, I'm talking about other people in this church that love you and you don't even know that they're covering you. You so into everybody out to get you. Uh, you believe in the enemy tell you nobody loves you and you don't even know how many people in this church are going before God for you. So then when your blessings begin to come, you think it's according to what you spoke. Mm -mm. You're blessed by association. Trust me, I know I was blessed by association for many years when I refused to walk right, talk right. But my mama's prayers, my mama's prayers, it was nothing that I did. It was my mama's prayer. I won't take it out of the box because of her faithfulness. Who's standing in the gap for you? Mm. Last one. People are preaching, prophesying, and praying. But nothing is changing. They sound good. They look good. But no spirit of impartation. I can only impart in you what I have in me. A tree can only bear fruit of itself. I can't impart joy in you when there's no joy in me. Oh, come on, come on. We talk about that all the time to the praise team. You can't come in here and leave nobody no way you can't go yourself. I want to show you how to get to New York and you don't know yourself. Blind lead the blind, they both end up in the ditch. Hmm. Are they allowed to have a bad day? Is the praise team people allowed to have a bad day? I mean, they gotta come in here and do their job regardless. See, a lot of us can come in here and sit down, sit down. Have our bad day, not open our mouth. But the praise team got to push anyhow, right? So then what they have to do is they have to learn that God's will overrides mine. That's the only way they can be effective. Which means when I'm having a bad day like I did today, I can't come in here and take my bad day out on y'all and look crazy at y'all because y'all not saying amen. It means I put myself in whatever I went through today. To the set. Because my job for the Father is more important than anything I go through. It's just that simple. I'm human. I had my bad days. But when I learn to put my bad day and my mess aside to do the will of my Father, I'm blessed beyond measure. Because I recognize what's more important than me. Are we good for saying it's all about God? Saying it. Screaming it. Singing it. But when are we going to live it? Otherwise, we're just yelling a lot, singing a lot, telling a lot, praying a lot, testifying, and prophesying. Oh my God. And every liar shall have their place in the lake of fire. Now, it does not say that because I'm an apostle, I won't go to hell if I start lying. I will take me and my title straight to hell because he's not a God that should lie. Hmm. But then again, if I'm an apostle and I start to lie, that means I really don't know him. I just have the title. speak authority in you when there's no authority in me. Be careful.
careful who you are sitting under. What do they have that you need? Main point, I can't speak agape love in you when there's still jealousy and envy in me. The kingdom needs more love, not competition. What's rolling down to you? Now God says in his word that the greatest commandment is to love thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. This is the greatest. Um, it says somewhere in the word of God, though, that and though you can prophesy and cast out demons or whatever, 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 and you have not love, it means what? Hmm. So then, it doesn't matter how anointed you are, how skilled you are. If you don't have the love of God in you, there's absolutely nothing that you can impart in me. You see, you have anointed people that can preach. They can prophesy. They can sing. They can play. But they don't have enough authority in them to pass you anything. An apple tree can only give you what? You mean to tell me I can't declare and decree a pear? And one come up there. The Bible says, speak those things that are not as good they want. I'm going to declare a pair to come from this apple tree. Mm. You think that'll work? So then why is it that we think we can all of a sudden take our nasty inwardly self and declare to give somebody else the spirit of Christ? I used to think about it and use the analogy of a steak. Majority of the time, people love steak. Steak was one of the high-class meals. They used to have the great steak here in Norfolk. I mean, that place, that even back then, it was at least $18 for the smallest steak. And you had a choice of whether they cooked the steak to your order or you can go to the grill and cook the steak like you like it on the open flame grill. Well, the very first time I went there and I ordered my steak, they said, okay, well, do you want us to cook it or do you want to cook it? I, huh? I thought I heard wrong. You say, you want us to cook it to your liking or would you like to go to the grill and cook it to yourself? $20 a steak, you need to take that steak and go over there and cook it just like I like it, or you're going to get another one and cook that one just like I like it for $20 a steak. Why would I pay you $20 to come here and cook my own steak? But people did it. People did it because they got to cook a good steak. Anybody? Y'all too young. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about? The great steak used to be on Military Highway? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Ah, so expensive. I only ate that once in my life. And I've been here all my life. But then again, they turned me off when they asked me if I wanted to cook my own steak. I didn't want to mess with that anymore. But if you have this nice, juicy steak, nice and tender, and it's cooked just the way you like it, and it looks so good, but instead of putting it on a plate, they put it on a garbage can there. Would you want it? No. Lord, help Abel right now in the name of Jesus. I know why I said, Lord, help him. I ain't asked you to help him. I, I prayed to him. I made my request known. Ah. So, what you're saying is, if they take a garbage can lid, who's going to do that? Let's, let's be a realist here. 
I would not want that steak. I don't care how good it is. I don't care how juicy it is. I don't care how seasoned that thing is. It could be the best steak that ever was made on this earth. The fact that you took that steak and you put it on a garbage can top, it means that that steak really didn't mean much to you no way. If the steak meant that much to you, you put it in the right position on a clean plate. Now the word of God is the word of God. Comes to heal, deliver, set free. The word of God is awesome. But if you take the word of God, the greatest thing that ever walked this earth, and you put it on top of a stink, nasty person to impart it in you, do you want it? Because there's a possibility that some of that residue that's on that stank nasty person, that's on that garbage can top, it's gonna get in me. You see, this is the thing. We want people to respect our positions. We want people to respect our anointing. But when you take this awesome word of God and set it on a garbage can top, how dare you get offended when they don't want it? Hmm. Now, the last analogy. Nice old pot of chicken. Yeah. <coughs> Felder Nagy cooks some awesome chicken. Shit, they make you want to smack something. Mm. Mm -hmm. Take a little bit of cornbread on the side, oh, man, has some sour cream, you be in the house. Chimney is a whole meal by itself. You yeah. really ain't got to add nothing. You got That's everything right. you need, meat, vegetables, stuff. You got everything you need right there in that chimney, right? Everything you need. It's a full meal. Everything you need is in the chimney. Y'all with me? Go ahead. So, this chili is awesome. And I have this big, giant pot of chili on stuff. Now, everybody wants that chili because it's the best chili, right? What if I take five pebbles, just five, of gravy train? <coughs> gravy train. Dog food. Ah, listen to me. Just five. <coughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just five. I got a big giant pot of some good stuff. I'm only. Oh, help me, Jesus. I'm only going to put five. Now, and everybody know what I mean by the gravy drink. Gravy drink is dark food. And the pebbles are only about that big. And actually, they say it tastes just like beef. And when a gravy train is, is, is a dog food that when you put it in the bowl and you add a little water to it, it actually turns into gravy. And it, and it gives the dog a full meal. Uh, you know, the, the gravy, the, 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 the pebbles will disintegrate. And it will cause gravy type meal for the dog. And it makes the dog think that he's eating regular human food. You know what I'm saying? It tastes just, it tastes just like. I'm going by the commercial, man. So. So like I was saying. If you take these five pebbles, no bigger than a dime each, a gravy tree, and you drop those little bitty five pebbles inside of that chili, and you stir it up really, really good. So you wouldn't be able to tell which is a piece of gravy train and which is a piece of beef. And because it all tastes alike, there's a chance that in your bowl of chili, you're gonna get some dog food. Now it's only 
a 2% chance. The odds are in your favor. Come on, man. I mean, if all of us got a bowl in here, only two of us would end up with the dog food. Y'all with me? The gravy is just as a do. You just get a little gravy and it'll just kind of great, but then the rest of the stuff, it's just, you know, it's, look at how much good is in there. Why are you going to concentrate on a little 2% of bad? I'm sorry, what'd you say? You mean 2% of bad defiles the whole 100? Uh, uh, uh. Hold up, hold up. I need y'all to hear this. Because the gravy train cannot still exist only within itself. It becomes a part of the other 98%. So then, the entire pot of chili is infected. Now, you could eat the chili and not get a piece of dog food, but the gravy from the dog food is going to be in everybody's stuff. Hmm. Oh. So you mean to tell me that you're going to get mad with me because I say, yes, all this is good. It's good. But you can't put that dog food in all that chili. Because if you do, nobody's going to eat it. You've just wasted. Everything good has just been wasted. It's tainted. Nobody wanted it. Is it still some good stuff in there? Yes, it is. Is it still some nutritious stuff in there? Yes, it is. But does anybody want it? Two hmm. people of God, just is what I'm telling you. You want to say I'm a Christian. You want to say that I live for God. But you want to take a little bit of that devil's food called sin which never is self-contained. It always finds itself pouring over into every area. Your sin cannot be self-contained. Remember, one sin will lead to another. You can't do one sin. It, it does not work. It, it does. You, you cannot do one sin. When you do one, you must do another to cover the one. Hmm. Now, if, Natalie, if if Elder Natalie did this and she came in here and she's like, I, I bought chili for everybody. But I must confess, five pieces of gravy train fell over in there. And I didn't want to throw the whole pot away because of that little five pieces. And we would all say what? I'm good. I ate before I got here. I'm good. Whoa, 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 whoa. Say that again. Did y'all catch that revelation there? You are willing, you care so little of me that you are willing to come in here and feed me some dog food and tell me that it's okay. Who in your life are you trying to minister to and give them some sin food and want them to think it's all right? Why are we so weak into thinking that it's okay for us to do wrong, but not okay for us to wrong others? It's different when we do it. We didn't mean it. 
But when someone else does it, we will tear them out the front. It's easy for us to say that somebody needs to forgive me and move on. <coughs> but when you need to forgive somebody and move on, it's different. You don't understand. You don't understand how much that got hurt. What well, other people are too. Why is it that you put yourself above all? <laughs> 